It's the number on the right. Good evening. Good evening. We have our Vesper service here printed out in the bulletin, and we will be getting it online as well. In fact, it is online as we speak. Um, for those who are at home, we'll be able to get it online and they uh, participate in the service. We stand. O oh Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, the Lamb of our salvation. By this I know that you delighted me. My enemy will not shout when I am you. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, Many will be died in his name perish, and the only one that will see me, he gathers in tears. While his heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells us the wrong. All who hate me whisper together about me, and they imagine the worst for me. They say a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who made my bread has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me. And raise me up that I may be But you have upheld me because of my integrity. And set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. From everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout and triumph over me. Our first reading is from 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter. Then David came to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech came to meet David, trembling, and said to him, Why are you alone, and no one with you? And David said to Hamelech the priest, The king has charged me with a matter, and said to me, Let no one know anything of the matter about which I send you, and with which I have charged you. I have made an appointment with the young men for such and such a place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread, or whatever is here. And the priest answered David, I have no common bread on hand. But there is holy bread, if the young men have kept themselves from women. And David answered the priest, Truly women have been kept from us as always when I go on an expedition. The vessels of the young men are holy even when it is an ordinary jury, journey. How much more today will their vessels be holy? So the priest gave him the holy bread, for there was no bread there but the bread of the presence, which is removed from before the Lord to be replaced by hot bread on the day that it is taken away. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our second reading is from the epistle to the Corinthians, the first epistle, beginning in the 10th chapter, the 15th verse. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices participants in the altar? What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything, or that an idol is anything? No. I imply that what pagans sacrifice, they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. 
You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Please rise. The Holy Gospel is from Matthew, the 12th chapter. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which it was not lawful for him to eat nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord, my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, bread is, is one of the most widely consumed food products in the world. And it comes in its various forms from just plain white sandwich bread to, to uh, Italian, crusty Italian bread, a baguette, or for some of us, gluten free bread. Well, in all these different forms, Food is a basic staple of nutrition for many, many people in many, many countries, and it's been so for thousands of years. Bread is very common in the Bible, throughout the Bible, throughout the, both the Old and New Testaments. In fact, it appears in over 300 verses. In many cases, bread is actually stated as an equivalent to food. Like even when we pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, we're basically praying for daily sustenance, not just bread, but daily sustenance, a daily provision from God. In the Old Testament, there was a very special kind of bread, a holy bread, called the bread of the presence. The most direct translation of that would be bread of the face, such as being face to face with God. It was also known as the show bread. Now this bread was always to be before the face of the Lord, although somewhat indirectly. It was kept on a table that was covered in gold and it was kept in the holy place, but between that and the presence of God, there was a great big curtain or, or a veil, if you will, to veil the presence of God. In the tabernacle, it was something like 15 feet wide, probably even bigger in the temple, and it was some four inches thick and it was to separate the holy place from the most holy place. In the most holy place was the, the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat where God was said to come for his people. Only the priests were allowed, the certain special priests were allowed in, in the holy place, and only the high priest was allowed once a year in the most holy place. Otherwise, it was always separated by that veil, that curtain. This bread that was kept there, this bread of the face, the bread of the presence, the show bread, it could only be eaten by the priests, the priests that were allowed in the holy place, and they were only allowed to do so when new bread was brought in to replace it. It was also, understand that the, there was, on this bread, this bread of the presence, it was to be 12, I don't say loaves, 12 pieces, perhaps of flat bread, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. We read in our gospel reading from Matthew, the 12th chapter, about a time when Jesus and his disciples were walking through some grain fields. It was the Sabbath day, they, had, they were done with synagogue, and now they're moving on to the next area, the next town where they'd, they'd be ministering. And here they were going through these grain fields and they were getting hungry. So the disciples started to pick some grain, probably some wheat, pick them off the, off the stalks there, and then they would rub them between their fingers to try to get the, the, uh, the chaff off so they could get down to the nutritious part. 
Well, as they're going along, some Pharisees that are following, they're, they're looking for any trouble they can find. They say, uh-uh, can't do this. This is, a sab- this is a Sabbath violation. You're doing work by rubbing those grains and picking those grains and rubbing them. You're doing work. You violated the Sabbath. Jesus, what are you going to do about it? Well, Jesus then, he responds, giving them, not so much three lessons, but one lesson with three points, three major points to it, or three illustrations to it. And the basis of this lesson that he's given to us, given to them and to us, is basically about his identity. He's not really directly addressing the Sabbath. He's talking about his identity. Just who is this Jesus of Nazareth? And what are the blessings of those who follow him? Jesus starts with his first point in this lesson. He gives reference to the king, David, one of the great king of Israel. He get, talks about a time when David went into the tabernacle and he got, he got this showbread, the bread of the presence, to take along with him because he had no bread. Is what, what the situation was, David was fleeing from King Saul. King Saul had figured out that David and his family would be the true chosen ones, the true king, the line of kings for Israel. God had chosen them, and he was becoming quite jealous, so he tried to kill David. So David flees. He has to run, run away without any preparation. He has no food. He has no weapons, basically just a shirt on his back. So he goes off, he, he go, and he look, tries to find some food there in, in the area where the tabernacle was kept. He went to the priest, and he asked, what have you got for me? And the priest said, well, the only thing we've got here is the, the holy bread, the bread of the presence. Well, David said, well, we can do that. We can take that I, for me and for the men I'm going to meet up with. So Jesus points that out. You know, he says, do you not see that in Scripture? Nobody really complained about that. And he says, how much, and basically what he's saying is, how much more, do the, if David can do this, how much more the followers of the Son, the Son of Man, how much more him and his followers, can, can they not forgo the man-made rules of the Sabbath? Not the God-ordained rules of Sabbath, but the man-made Sabbath rules. Now, it's a small point, but Jesus is going to build on this. And he goes on to his second point, and he points out, he says, what about the priests in the temple and in the tabernacle? Aren't they working, aren't they profaning the Sabbath? You know, some people think that priests, that the Sabbath and Sunday are the only day that, that priests and pastors work. So here they are, they're in this, they're doing work, and so in effect, they're being unlawful. They're, they're doing work on the Sabbath. So Jesus is pointing out, you know, if they can do this work and not, and not and get away with this, in fact, it's, it's said to be good, how much more the followers of the Son, the Christ, how much more can they, can't they go out and pick food? After all, Jesus said, something greater than the temple is here. Of course, he's referring to himself. His third point isn't so much, doesn't pose a question to them, but he makes a proclamation. He basically he says, if, as recorded in Matthew 12, verse 7, if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. I desire mercy, God is saying, and then when Jesus punctuates that with the Son of Man, he is the Lord of the Sabbath, He's basically saying that he is the manifestation of God's mercy. The mercy that God desires, it's going to come through him. It's going to come through the Son, Son of Man, who is the Lord of Established. Now look at what he's really saying there. He's, when he's saying he's the Lord of the Sabbath, he's, you go back, how is the Sabbath established? Well, by God, at creation. God's the only one to do any action at creation. The Father, Son, and the Spirit are the only ones that are acting there at creation. God does his work. He says this, and it happens, and, and then it comes to completion, and God rests, and he institutes the Sabbath day. He then comes back later and gives Moses the command. God gives the command to Moses to honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And, writes it, and God writes it with his finger on the, on the tablets of stone that Moses has carried up and is to take back down to the people. So only God can be the Lord of the Sabbath, and there's no way to miss what Jesus is saying there. He is he's the manifestation of God's mercy, the Lord of the Sabbath. He's saying if you understand that he is the realization of this mercy, if you trust in him, then you will have true Sabbath rest, the true Sabbath rest that God wants for his people. Jesus is the presence of God. It's not in some bread of presence. It's in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus often said, if you see me, if you know me, you've seen the Father and you know the Father. Now, we've been talking about the, the presence of God in, in kind of a specific way, a presence in the tabernacle or in the temple or, and above the Ark of the Covenant or in the presence of Jesus Christ. But isn't God omnipresent? Isn't God everywhere? Well, yes, the Bible does teach us that. But God isn't everywhere for us. He's for us in the Son. He's, he's omnipresent, but he's only for us in the places he's promised. He's only for us in the Son. Jesus said in John the sixth chapter, I'm the bread of life. I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. 
and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. He's the presence of God for us. He's come down, he's given his life so that we could be in his presence, the presence of God. People have said, I often hear, I would like to experience God. How can I experience God? It's if I could just feel the presence of God so I can experience his presence. Well, look where he's promised to be for us. He's everywhere, but look for where he's promised to be for us. He's promised to be for us, to be there for us in his word. And that relationship, that mystical relationship of, of the revealed word and the word made flesh. He's promised to be with us. The Lord has promised to be with us when we gather in his name. He's promised to be with us as we serve the least of these. And he's promised to be with us in his sacraments. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. Of course, he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given you. Take, eat, take, drink, this is the blood to shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This is God's mercy, the forgiveness of sins, his mercy. Jesus is the fulfillment. He is the realization of that mercy. We read this evening from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Yes, yes, of course it's participation in the body of Christ because God has said so and he has made it so. And this isn't just something for the priests, for those who could serve in the holy place. This is for all the followers of the Lord who, who have been called into faith, all who have been called and been declared holy, who have been consecrated by him, to him, and through him. It's all the people of faith. He brings us to faith, and he, he says that now we can partake of his real presence. He is there for us. We can take it, partake in a sense of the bread of the real presence. In our catechism, in the section on the, the sacrament of the altar, the question is posed, how, what, how is, how, who, is worthy, who can worthily partake of the Lord's Supper? And the reply is, but he is truly worthy and well prepared, who has faith in these words, given and shed for you for the remission of sins. But he who does not believe these words or doubts is unworthy and unfit, for the words for you, for you require altogether believing hearts. The gift of faith, baptized into, into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we can partake, partake of the bread of life, partake of the real presence, of the real bread of presence. It's the body given and the blood shed for us so that we can be within the presence of the Lord, be in the, his presence forever. It's declared in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, knowing that he has raised the Lord Jesus, he will also raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence, into the Lord's presence. That curtain they had there in the tabernacle in the temple that separated us from the presence of God, it's been torn in two. It was torn in two during the crucifixion as Jesus was completing his work of salvation for us. It was torn in two so that we can be in his presence. The way is open. It is open through the blood of Christ, who is the bread of life, who is the presence of God for us. Amen. Now may that peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. declaring 
sing the greatness of the Lord. The proud he scatters, the rule he shatters, sing the greatness of the Lord. Oppression halted, the meek exalted, full of the hungry, empty the wealthy. Oh, sing the greatness of God the Lord. Here is the token all that was spoken to Abram's offspring. God is fulfilling. Oh, sing the greatness of God the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, God the Father in heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit, be gracious to us. Be gracious to us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to, us, o Lord. to prosper the preaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. We implore you to, us, good Lord. to draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith to watch over and console the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who stand in our need of prayers, to give abundant blessing to all works of mercy and to have mercy on us all. We have to turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and to graciously hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Oh. 
the light. Keep me, O oh, keep me, King of kings, beneath thine own almighty wings. Forgive me, Lord, for thy dear Son, the ill that I this day have done, that with the world myself and thee I ere I sleep at peace may be. Teach me to live that I may dread the grave as little as my bed. Teach me to die that so I may rise glorious at the awful day. O oh, may my soul in thee repose, and may sweet sleep mine eyelids close, sleep that shall me more vigorous make to serve my God when I awake. When in the night I sleepless lie, my soul with heavenly thoughts supply. Let no ill dreams disturb my rest, no powers of darkness me molest. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The congregation may be seated. We give thanks to Pastor Andy for preaching the word to us tonight. And uh, we'll be continuing our Lenten Vespers uh, next week, at Wednesday at 7 o'clock again. Uh, this Sunday we have a divine service and uh, we'll continue to hear these messages that move us closer and closer to Jesus on the cross. We hear from our Lord in John chapter 3 this Sunday, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And uh, it's a passage that we hear... Uh, uh, so many times in life, but I think we might be able to hear it afresh a little bit this Sunday um, in the context that Jesus first spoke it to Nicodemus and remembering that he would lift high himself as the snake had been lifted high. So I'm eager to share the word with you on Sunday and encourage you to 